all that we have left to do to our digital scrapbook page is to add some finishing touches such as drop shadows to the elements to give them a little bit more dimension on the page as well as a title but the first thing I want to address is this thin white frame that is around the elements of our page the frame came with the template as you recall and it is very thin it sort of disappears against the busy polka dotted background paper that we have chosen so what I want to do is to thicken that frame up a little bit by adding an outline or a stroke to it. So in the layers palette, I'm going to find the layer that holds that frame. Here it is, large frame. And then I'm going to choose in the edit menu, stroke or outline. It gives us a box here for, with some choices. To make the frame just a little bit bigger, I would choose a small number here for the width. If I wanted to make it very thick, I could choose a large number. 8 pixels is going to be pretty good for us, I think. But we don't want it to be brown. We want it to be white like it is already. So we're going to choose white here in the color chooser. There we go. And when I click OK, you'll see that that thin white line gets just a little bit thicker and pops off of that background paper a little easier. We want to do the same thing to this little area that's for the title. So we're going to find the layer that that is on and repeat that process of adding a stroke. It kept our preferences there in um, the menu when we choose stroke. So when I press OK, then we've got a nice thick white frame and an area for a title. Now to add the title, I'm going to add my title with the text tool. I'm going to draw a text box here in that area. I have options up here to choose the font that I want. I want a sort of scripty font. The CK script is going to work nicely for me. I can choose the size of the font that I want. I actually want to choose 29. You can adjust it um, to the exact size you want if it's not listed here by clicking in this area and actually typing a number. You can get very precise with decimals if you choose to. And I want, I don't want my letters to be white. I want them to be a brown, close to the brown that we used in the digital brush that we added in the last tutorial. To do that, I'm going to click this color chooser, choose more colors. It gives me that eyedropper tool that I can then use to hopefully pick up a brown that's similar to that brown. And there it is. And that is going to be good. It's center aligned at the moment, but you do have an option to have your text left aligned or right aligned. I also have it set to bold. Um, you can make it italicized or um, you can underline it. And the title of this page is going to be This is Why. Because these photos are photos of my daughter looking at a scrapbook that I made. And this is why I scrapbook, because it helps us to preserve our memories and be able to share them and enjoy them. I'm going to hit the move tool in the tool palette over here and move this text box just a little bit to align that title right inside of that space just perfectly. And that looks great. The next thing that I want to do is to add some drop shadows to the elements of our page. To do this I'm going to start with the photographs Adding a drop shadow directly to this photograph is not going to do anything for us because the photograph is clipped to that yellow square shape. So what we need to do is add the drop shadow to the square shape that it is clipped to. In order to add a drop shadow, we're going to open this effects palette that is above the layers palette. Pull this up a little bit. And there are lots of options to add effects to your elements in this um, palette. There um, are plenty of different things. I am choosing the drop shadow menu. From this menu, there are different options. You can see I can add a drop shadow that will make my elements look like they're very far away from the page. The one that is most subtle and most natural, in my opinion, is this one right here at the bottom. So with the yellow square selected in the layers palette and this shadow style selected, I'm going to hit apply and you'll see a shadow appear on this bottom left hand photo. There it is. You also see in the layer 
for the yellow square, there's an icon that says effects. If I double click on that icon, it gives me a box that gives me the option of adjusting the effect style I just added to that element. I like the opacity of my shadows to be a little more subtle. I usually set them to about 50. I also want the shadow to look like it is smaller. Um, I want the photo to look like it is not as far away from the page as it appears now. So I'm going to adjust the distance of the shadow to about 8, I think. And then I'm going to adjust the size of the shadow, the spread of the shadow, a little bit. Make it really subtle, about 24, I think. That is really good. I like that. So I'm going to hit OK. Now I want the other photo to have the exact same shadow style. So what I'm going to do is on the layer where I added the shadow style, this yellow square layer, layer I'm going to right click on the thumbnail image in that layer and choose copy layer style. That is the effect that we added. And then I'm going to go to the other square, the other yellow square that the uh, other photograph is clipped to. I'm going to right click there and I'm going, to add, I'm going to click Paste Layer Style. And if you look, it added the same shadow to that layer. So I'm going to do the same process on all of the elements on the page. The ribbons, I want to have a less of a shadow than the photographs because they're going to appear to be behind the photographs. Again, I'm going to choose an opacity of 50 but I want it to be just above the background paper. So I'm going to choose a distance of about 5. We chose 8 for the photo, so a little bit less. And I don't know if you can see this, this bottom ribbon. And as I adjust, you can see the size of the shadow get bigger and smaller. And I think 10 is about perfect. Looks like it's just above the paper there. I'm going to copy that layer style right clicking on the thumbnail of that ribbon hitting copy layer style and I'm going to find the other ribbon right click and choose paste layer style and it added that shadow to the other ribbon as well so I'm going to do that same thing I like that shadow I think I'm going to add that same shadow layer style to the white pattern paper squares again if I add it to just the pattern paper it's not going to show up because the pattern paper is clipped to that light yellow square. So I need to add that layer style to the light yellow square. I'm going to do that there and we'll find the other one and add it to that one as well. There it is. Okay. I like that. Alright, the elements in our cluster and the staples are all that are left. I think for the staples we're going to do a layer of shadow that is just a little bit bigger than the shadow we just applied to our um, ribbon and papers. I'm going to zoom in here and you can see it. See it looks like that staple is floating up off of the page and that's not quite what we want. So let's find where I just added that. Let's find that staple. There it is. And adjust it. So we're going to adjust to 50 and then adjust down to well, I think 5 will probably be good for distance but then oh see that's looking much better how about 13 yes that looks great okay so I'm going to copy that layer style let's see if I can add it to multiple elements so I'm going to hold down the control key and select all of the staples that other staple that is holding the heart up there down zoom out a little bit using the scroll wheel on my mouse let's see if I can add that layer style to all of them look at that it added the same shadow layer style to each of the staples so I think I'm going to add the same layer style that we added to the paper and the ribbons, this one here, to the clock in that cluster. Let's find it. There's the heart. I believe that is the clock. Let's see. 
Yeah, so see, it looks like that clear clock is up off of the page a little bit. Now that button looks very unrealistic without a shadow on it. I want the shadow for the button to really be a strong shadow. I don't like the opacity. I still am going to move it down to 50%. But I want it to appear to be a little bit farther off of the page than, um, than say, the ribbons or the staples. So that looks pretty good to me. The last thing we need to add a shadow to is our heart there. And we'll adjust that as well to about 5 and 20. Oh, I think I'm going to type in 20 there. I think, yeah, that looks really good. And there we go. There's a finished scrapbook page. Certainly we could add other things and play with other tools, but for now I think this looks really good. I really appreciate you going through this tutorial with me. I hope you learned a few interesting tips and tricks and are more motivated to uh, preserve your memories through digital scrapbooking. Thank you.